Picking up where the well-received M1 model left off, the latest MacBook Pro released in January comes with an extra bump in power from the M2 Pro and M2 Max processing units. We've been trying out the higher-end M2 Max chip and seeing how upgrading affects everyday tasks across illustration, photography, video and motion graphics. First off, you get the same robust chassis whichever chip you choose. And sticking with what worked on the M1, this design is my favourite in quite a few generations. With MagSafe charging, HDMI output, SD reader, Wi-Fi 6E capability and 6 speaker sound system, this MacBook feels like it was built for creative workers in the studio or on the move. That comes across in the liquid XDR screen too, with all the tonal range and colour accuracy that professional media requires. Screen size is one thing I prefer not to compromise on, and the 16-inch model comes with a larger, longer-lasting battery. But if you're going for compactness, it's good to know that the 14-inch screen is just as crisp and vibrant. If you're into numbers, I ran the Cinebench R23 benchmarking test alongside my current machine, an Intel Core i9 MacBook Pro from 2019. Because it's a few years old now, this might be the same sort of device that you're thinking of upgrading from. And, unsurprisingly, the M2 Max came out way in the lead. But to find out how it actually handles, I chose a handful of the tasks that stretch my Intel Core device day to day to put it through its paces. For vector illustration, I was keen to try out some grain texture brushes. Because they're quite processor intensive, I've always been limited by how much I can use them. So it was a treat to have them work so smoothly on the M2. And files stayed perfectly manageable with a bunch of other grains, overlays, gradients, and complex vector shapes added too. If you do a lot of this type of work, or work on a larger scale, you might want to consider a higher end RAM configuration. But even at the lower end with 32 gigabytes, the M2 Max already expands creative possibilities considerably. Painting in Photoshop also highlights the upgrade in responsiveness where it's needed most. Using a Wacom Intuos Pro and the same oversized canvas and brush settings on both MacBooks, it's clear that the M2 Max keeps up better and provides the intuitive and expressive experience you really want for this sort of work. Photographers are particularly going to love the screen quality on any of the latest MacBook Pros, and of course the SD card reader. Now, I don't have any major sticking points on my older MacBook Pro when it comes to editing photographs, so I really went to town with some completely unnecessary masks and healing tools on a large RAW file and still couldn't get the M2 Max to slow down at all. If all that power just seems excessive, photographers wanting to upgrade might be just as happy with the more modestly specced M2 Pro, if 12 CPU cores can be described as modest. One thing that did stand out is the lack of fan noise. I'm used to it whirring away while running pretty much any professional creative application, but on the M2 it didn't start up at all, and one area that might benefit even more is video. I've been reliably delivering 4K video and motion graphics on my Intel Core MacBook Pro for years, but there are limits. I have to be mindful of how complex projects get, and sometimes leave out certain things that I know are going to slow it down. So I was interested to see how the M2 Max, with its dedicated double hardware video encoders, would change that. Split screen footage sprung to mind, and I found that the M2 provided much smoother playback of four 4K clips. That was reflected on export too, when even a few seconds is a huge difference that anyone racing to meet a client deadline will appreciate. My test was a 30 second 4K timeline, which exported in nearly half the time on the M2. I also wanted to test warp stabilizer side by side, since that's an effect that always causes a bit of a pause. A 12 second 50 frames per second 4K clip came out in roughly a third of the time. A significant difference, especially added up over the course of a whole project. Finally, the big one for me, motion graphics in After Effects. My sample project uses a bunch of tools and effects that I've found to really hamper progress in the past. These include 3D cameras, lights and extrudes, as well as blurs, glows, grains, particle world, fractal noise, and high-res raster textures. Parts of it are just about at the limit of what even the M2 will play back smoothly. But buffering is fast, and I can still edit perfectly well without it freezing up, thanks to the 38-core GPU in this model. So without even opting for the higher RAM configurations, the M2 Max provides headroom to expand tool sets and create motion graphics much more interesting than might have been possible otherwise. So yes, huge fan of the design of this MacBook Pro and all of its features, ports, screen, sound, and the M2 Max chip is clearly a huge upgrade, speeding up any workflow and opening up a world of creative possibilities. If your workflow is more intensive, involving 8K footage or true 3D modeling, you might consider a higher RAM configuration or even the newly announced Mac Studio or Mac Pro. 
And if you're working on lighter creative projects, there's always the MacBook Pro with M2 Pro chip. If you're thinking about upgrading your MacBook and want to learn more about any of the options, get in touch and we'll be more than happy to help.